Hello, everyone. I am Jerry Bryant, and this is the uh, first edition of Chips and Salsa. I'm here with my esteemed colleague, Christopher Krobe Robinson. Hey, everybody. Hey, everyone. So today we are going to introduce a special guest. We'll bring him in now, Enrico Carreri, who is a senior principal engineer here at Intel, uh, working on the debug architecture team. Hello, Enrico. Hey, how you guys doing? We're good. Awesome. Thanks for coming. Thank you. So, Thanks for having me. So uh, today we published the uh, Intel Debug Technologies paper uh, that you helped to author. Um, and we've got your bio up on the blog post. But can you give us a little uh, you know, background information about yourself and uh, how long you've been at Intel and the kind of work you do here? Yeah, um, I've been with Intel a little over 22 years. Done a lot of little different things, started at analog, moved over to digital, and have been working on debug for a long time now. Um, I've worked through many different products, all the way down to the little small devices up now, through up through servers. My current focus is really on uh, debug interfaces, but what we're here to discuss today is on the security and privacy side that's related to debug. Yeah, so can you can you tell us a little bit about uh, yeah your role as the owner of uh, debug security and privacy? What does that yeah, entail? So, yeah, so the I work with kind of this virtual team of people across the corporation, and we look at our debug capabilities and we work on how to protect them so that they don't provide. Um, access to uh, assets or um, any private data and things like that. So we want to protect all of that, that that material and making sure that our debug doesn't expose any of those things. Yeah. So we're looking at how to make sure that you can enable debug in a, in a protected way when you need it. Now, yeah, and you, you don't just do this for Intel. You're involved in some, in some industry groups helping to further security and privacy and debug technologies. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, yes. I am the debug workgroup chair for the MIPI Alliance. And so I've been doing a lot of things over there and working with all of our industry partners there uh, with various different debug modes and interfaces and things. But the other thing that we're doing over there as well is looking at security and again, how to protect those various um, different things that we, we've been specking out. Um, so been heavily involved over there, plus involved in some other uh, standardizations and in, in, in the use of standards as well uh, for our debug and in uh, and our protections as well. That's great. I've had the chance to work in a couple industry groups kind of developing standards. Could you maybe describe how Intel might try to adopt or drive these standards? Well, we always look for where we can get a benefit, right? Obviously. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you talk about these standards, what we're really trying to do is not just enable our one chip, right? We can go and create a debug and create some protection around that debug for our CPU. That's great for our CPU, but that doesn't necessarily help the overall customer in their platform. So we're use we like the standards because it's not just a we're not the only ones able to use it. Everyone in the industry is able to use those things. So not only will your CPU be protected, but the idea is all the other components on that platform can also be protected. And if we're using standards then the user, the customer, or the end user, whomever who wants to use that debug and use it in that secure, protected manner can all do it in the same way, right? They're not going to get frustrated that the CPU's done this way and something else is done another way. No, that, that's where the standardization has a lot of benefits. And that's why we're actively involved in these things because we, we see it as it's not just helping Intel, but it's, it's helping it's going to provide a better solution at the end for, for our customers. Are there, are there uh, any other initiatives with, through these standards organizations that you're involved in? So again, in the MIPI Alliance, we've been trying, we've been working together where 
debugged isn't just doing it their own way, right? We don't have just a standard for the way we're protecting debug. We're utilizing things that already exist out in the industry, right? So that debug is not special <laughs> in, the, in that way, where if you're doing protection for something else, like let's take link protection, for example, right? You want to protect your debug link, right? You want to make sure no one's snooping on there or whatnot. Well, that link protection, we don't want to create a protection mechanism that's just debug, right? We want to use whatever is already there and you're reusing it. So if there's already those standards that exist, DMTF SPDM as an example, there's already things out there, why not just use them, right? So that, again, it's back to the, the reuse is great as far as protection, if it's protecting one, it, it'll protect us as well, right? We all take advantage of that and keeps it more secure, right? Everyone's taking advantage, making improvements and things. But from an implementation perspective, it's also better because once you do it one time, you, you can use it over and over again. And who wants to pay for debug, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. So uh, it sounds like we do quite a lot of work with this MIPI group. Um, is this something that is available for public consumption? Can anyone take a look at it and join in? Well, the demo specifications, absolutely. Um, as far as a lot of the other things that we're doing around security, that's in progress. We're doing a lot of things there. Obviously, as members, feel free, join, get, get involved. There's a lot of things going on. Um, if you're not members, maybe you'll just need to wait a little bit for it to come out. It, like I said, it is in progress. We're doing a lot of different things there. Um, and you'll start seeing you'll you'll start seeing things from them and seeing things from us. Excellent. So let's talk about the paper. Uh, <clears throat> we titled it Intel Debug Technologies, but it's really about protection technologies, is it not? It, it is. Uh, a good good part of it is uh, <clears throat> on our uh, debug protection technology which is really kind of our suite of various different capabilities that we have to, to protect those debug modes and, and debug capabilities that I was talking about and, and ensuring that the user is, it has a, a secure way of accessing it and that those users you know, don't get to those uh, secure assets or, 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 or um, the private data when they're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we have uh, what is how do we refer to it? Uh, red unlock, uh, but really the internal naming for that is what we call Intel unlock. What can you describe what that is? So the Intel unlocked is really it, it provides a couple things, right? The first thing is is obviously we have some secure assets inside, right? Um, our our process technology and some other IEP. That, that, that's um, that, that's Intel's, right? So we want to protect that, right? So the red, this Intel unlock gives us an ability to get to our IP, right? So that someone else, non-Intel, doesn't get to our IP, right? Mm -hmm. And when we're talking IP, this is, we're talking the silicon IP, right? We're talking the, the silicon hardware type of stuff. And again, with that, the other piece is, is that we get to this low level silicon kind of debug, right? Mm -hmm. it, because you don't want that, you don't want that type of stuff out there for anybody to get to, right? You don't want, you don't want people to do that. You want to protect those and, and have these privileged debug modes. So Intel Unlocked is one of those things that again gives us those that higher privilege silicon level debug, hardware debug, and it gives us the ability to get to our IP assets in that, in that context. And so why, why is that actually needed? Well, sometimes those IP assets cause issues, <laughs> right? And we need to be able to get to those and, and figure out uh, what, what's going on, right? So there might be a, a piece of firmware as an example, that needs to be that that we need to go look at and see. Hey, that's not behaving properly, or or whatnot, right? Again, who knows? It's debug, right? Something's something's going wrong, and we want to be able to to get to that asset and, and figure out um, how to fix it, and figure out the root cause. 
Yeah, I was going to ask, you know, I, obviously we, we want to you know, engage with uh, customers in the community to kind of understand these protection mechanisms. Is there anything else in the paper that you might want to highlight or were there any um, anything forthcoming that you want to share in this area around protection mechanisms? Yeah, there's a couple. There's there's two things, something today and something tomorrow. So let, let's Ooh. let's talk today. So I talked, I said, we talked about that Intel unlocked, right? We also have other unlocks for, again, similar types of things for elevated privilege, right? Mm -hmm. Again, our customers, we help them out. There's elevated privileges for them to get and do what they need to be able to do and work with their assets. Same thing, mm -hmm. right? Again, these kinds of these kinds of privilege demug modes, you don't want out in the wild. Right. And that's why we go and protect those. Right. You don't want some guy off the street to be able to get to and do that on your on your PC. Right. Now, coming up in some of our, our other our, our newer products that are coming, there's mm -hmm. some other technologies that are other features as part of our uh, debug protection technology that we're looking at. Um, one's around authorization. So you can't just pick up the PC and start debugging without having been given authorization to do that. So we're Excellent. looking at how to do that, how to enable those kinds of things. And remember, I mentioned link protection. So mm -hmm. we're looking at that. And, and then not only will you, you know, have that authorization, have your unlocked privilege, but then we will take that and protect that path where the data is going to make sure if someone's, I don't know, maybe on the same network or whatever, right? Make sure that they're not seeing that data as well, because obviously, as I said, you're doing those unlocks to work with your IP and your assets. Even when they come out, you want to protect those as well. So yeah. we're looking at technologies there. And again, we're using and looking at industry standards. I've mentioned SPDM as one of those things. We're also looking at that to really uh, boost and, and, and create um, that uh, those features for our customers. Awesome. Well, yeah. hey, Thank you for taking the time and uh, joining us today. And um, for those watching, the uh, link to the paper we discussed is, will be right around there, also in the blog post. Um, Enrico, awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, All right, thank you. Thanks, see sir. you guys later.